It is my pleasure to be part of this validation meeting on UPR midterms reports, and I regret I cannot join you in Ulaanbaatar due to the fact that this event overlaps with the 30th session of the Human Rights Council UPR Working Group, which is actually held here in Geneva. I commend the government of Mongolia and UPR Info for convening this important meeting with the active participation of various national stakeholders. This year, as you know, is the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which focuses on promoting the rights enshrined in the Declaration in our daily life and reflecting on progress, challenges, and way in which we can better protect human rights. The anniversary offers an important opportunity to ensure that human rights are relevant not only for peace and security, economic and social development, but also the prevention of conflict and humanitarian emergencies, which will contribute to improving the quality of our daily life. In this regard, allow me to recall the following important initiatives at the global level. Number one, the new Secretary General strongly concentrate his action on prevention and on advancing the 2030 development agenda with human rights at its core and at reinforcing the effectiveness of our organization. Secondly, the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development and in particular the current efforts to advance the 17 SDGs respecting the principle of leaving no one behind, which are closely linked to human rights recommendations. And thirdly, the opening last May 2017 of the third cycle of the Universal Periodic Review within the Human Rights Council. Now, as you know, the UPR, to which all member states are subjected, is a real update on the human rights situation in each country, a complete checkup on the state of international legal obligations in the field of human rights, with specific recommendations coming from an average of 90 states in light of observation that the international human rights mechanism, as well as NHRIs and civil society organization, have shared with our office. Universal participation in the review process reflects the political will of member states at the highest level, with often one or more minister as head of delegation, and with an average of more than 20 senior officials from various line ministries and state entities. The third cycle focuses on follow-up and implementation of recommendations that the state and the review receives. It therefore offers the opportunity to adopt measure geared towards concrete action at national level. Indeed, the response to many of today's challenges can be successfully addressed through action by governments with the involvement of all other stakeholders taking into account the following consideration. International human rights mechanism as a whole, that is to say those coming from treaty bodies, special procedures, and the Universal Periodic Review, provide hundreds of specific recommendations, a true X-ray of the most important gaps at national level in light of both legal obligations resulting from the ratification by the state of international human rights treaties and political commitments made to human rights bodies, including the UPR. In order to facilitate their implementation, the High Commission for Human Rights is addressing the Minister of Foreign Affairs of each member state after the adoption of the outcome document of the third cycle in the Human Rights Council. And in his letter, the High Commissioner identify maybe 10, 12 areas that require attention, described not in legalistic language, but in a way that can be understood by non-experts. Its objective is to encourage an action-oriented approach 
by the government and other stakeholders over the next four and a half years in view of the subsequent UPR cycle, thus contributing to aligning human rights action plans also to efforts to achieve the SDGs with human rights at their center, as emphasized by the Secretary General. Coordination at the national level is of course essential given the amount of work and the requests coming from various human rights mechanisms. The experience of states has allowed us to compile a guide on national structure for the preparation of report, implementation efforts, and follow-up to recommendations, what we often refer to as NMRF, where the government's leading role is recognized, often by the Minister of Foreign Affairs or the Minister of Justice, with the involvement of other line ministries and the participation of various state entities, such as Parliament, the Judiciary, NHRIs, and of course, civil society organizations. Coordination at the UN level through the inclusion of human rights recommendations in the UNDAF, as well as in the planning and programming of individual UN entities in line with their mandate, is becoming part of the overall efforts to advance the SDGs. We are working also on the Universal Human Rights Index in order to cluster all such recommendations for each country, SDG by SDG, so as to facilitate the task of our colleagues within UN country teams under the leadership of the resident coordinators. So to conclude, greater attention to human rights and above all to the recommendations resulting from various human rights mechanisms, greater efforts to coordinate national action for reporting and follow-up, and greater synergies between development programs and human rights programs are key to addressing root causes enhancing prevention and ensuring the success and sustainability of development efforts. It is important to appreciate the value of standing NMRF as a guarantor to maintain and deepen partnership between national stakeholders, which assist the government of Mongolia in more actively interacting with international human rights mechanism and in following up and implementing accepted recommendations. A holistic approach to implementing such recommendations from the human rights mechanism and especially the UPR, aware of the complementary nature of other international human rights mechanisms such as the treaty bodies and the special procedures, is of, of course vital to enable the UPR to deliver on its promise to improve the human rights situation on the ground. Further, it is critical to acknowledge close linkages between implementation of recommendation of international human rights mechanism and the achievement of the sustainable development goals. In this regard, I would like to highlight the added value of a global compact between government, the UN system, and the international community including bilateral donors, a compact which recognized the fundamental role of human rights and ensure their implementation at the national level in line with the efforts to achieve every single SDG. Equally important, I would like to acknowledge the long-standing cooperation between civil society organization and the National Human Rights Commission of Mongolia and the government line ministries in the UPN process, which could serve, in our view, as a good model and an example for other countries to follow in this region and beyond. I am hopeful that the current meeting, where implementation progress is assessed a mid-term point for Mongolia, can provide a solid basis for the next review and, again, a good indication on how to do it for other countries within the region and beyond. I wish you a very successful and productive meeting and thank you very much.